I'd like to introduce you to Kyle. Kyle was a senior at risk of not graduating, so I agreed to mentor him each week. I would check on his attendance, and I noticed frequently he would come late or he would leave early. But looking further into his attendance, he hardly ever missed fourth period. I was like, what is fourth period? Fourth period was our one STEM class at our high school. They were building a paddle wheel to be installed in the irrigation ditch at the local campground, and it would generate the electricity for the lights at the check-in kiosk. I learned there was another student who was pulling all-nighters on his computer to draft the plans, the blueprints for this paddle wheel. So I had to go see it. And when I visited the class, the students were complaining, Mrs. Garber, 49 minutes just isn't long enough for us to get this done. These students were losing track of time. They were so into what they were doing. And it was classes like this that helped me help Kyle to graduate. Have you ever had that happen? Have you ever been in so into a project that you lost track of time? I'd like to share some peewees who lost track of time, too. Um, we have some kindergartners, and in the social studies unit for kindergarten, they study community. So we had a local animal shelter come visit, and um, a few four-legged friends, and these kinders were devastated. They knew these animals had to feel wanted. So they sprung into action and researched how do you make homemade dog biscuits, and how do you engineer dog toys out of simple tennis balls, rope, and canvas. So for a time being after that, if you adopted a dog from our local animal shelter, you also got a kinder care package so your dog would feel wanted. My name is Stephanie Garber, and I am blessed to be both the elementary principal and the superintendent for Culver School District. We're a small rural school district located here in Central Oregon. We have about 700 students K-12, and about 65% of those students are designated as high poverty. We're unique in the fact that all three buildings are on one unified block, and so we're one campus. It is such a gift to get to be there on the first day of kinder and shake all their hands. If you can remember that day, it's the day everybody waits for, right? You get to go to big school. And 13 years later, I get to shake their hand and hand them their diploma. I realized uh, the elementary principal part is my secret weapon. So um, I've also realized it's always cool to hug your elementary principal, no matter how old you are. Never cool to hug your high school principal. <laughs> so um, it is in this fondness that I realize I'm with them their whole school career. Their education matters greatly to me. And so often across campus, I'll, I'll get my hug from the, the bigger kids, and then I snoop. I ask them, how's it going? What are you studying? What's exciting to you? And it's in these conversations that I get down because their love of learning, their passion for school diminishes. I believe we have to save these kids from the traditional. The public school structure has existed for almost a century. Our ancestors created the structure to produce a workforce for the industrialized nation. It worked, it was brilliant. But the workers we need now are very different. We need to shift to do more than just um, process students. Schools are still structured for that uniformity. All the students sit in the same classes, um, they get all the same credits, and thus they all get the same diploma. We need to think further than processing students. We need to think, what are we doing to make society stronger? What are we doing to build better workers for tomorrow? And what are we doing to fuel their dreams? Um, I happen to be a 60s baby, and um, for all of you young people, we had social media. <laughs> Check out the, this technological wonder. <laughs> On the comfort of my own couch, once we got this, I could hang up and dial the new friend just with a flick of my fingers. And 
We had Instagram. We would write these and fold these. <laughs> and we could instantly pass them during passing time, Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, let's be honest, raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I completely share these in jest, well, kind of in jest, just so we all, us older people, can commiserate together. Um, but just a point, look how far our world has come. Our world has changed so much but the structure of our public schools has not. Anything I learned in high school, and many of the things students are learning right now, they can learn right here. The internet has forever transformed the acquisition of knowledge. No longer do we need somebody standing in front of them imparting this knowledge on them, and they take notes and they memorize it for that high stakes test. A little news flash, high stakes tests don't motivate our kids. <laughs> we need to teach them how do you navigate in this vast sea of information and how can you use it to make a difference? I believe we're boring our kids and I believe that this traditional method doesn't work it's actually really irrelevant to them. In my district, we have embarked on an initiative to try to change this. Um, you may have heard of STEM, and it's science, technology, engineering, and math. And sometimes you'll see an A thrown in there for the arts, STEAM. In our district, we mixed it up one more time, those letters, and we call it TEAMS. We have realized the beauty of having community partners in all of our projects with our students. The level of expertise and rigor they bring is amazing. We have 40 teachers, kindergarten through 12th grade, in our district. So variety is a real challenge. You start adding in all of these community partners, and all of a sudden, variety is at your fingertips. One of our first very most important community partners was Oregon State University Cascades campus. I had kind of slinked in there with my idea, and I said, here's my idea, what do you think? Am I crazy? And I was told, ambitious, but not crazy. So they immediately partnered with us, and we wrote grants together. And these grants provided um, a STEM coach, they provided summer institutes, um, they provided um, graduate level coursework, and a data person who followed us all around for two years, just writing like crazy. Um, and was a, she was able to um, give us the results and show the significant student learning. So basically, OSU held our hand for two years while we um, embarked on this. I want to share a few of the projects so you get a sense of the work. Um, in first grade, um, they partnered with our high school biology class. And down at Lake Billy Chinook, which is near our school district, there's a riparian area and there was a declining bluebird population. So our bigs and our littles went and worked with the Audubon Society and the park rangers, and they um, worked on habitat. That's why it was declining. So they built 15 birdhouses and went and installed them. And um, so last check, all 15 were inhabited, which is good news. In second grade, they study weather as part of their science unit. And um, we're a rural farm community, and our second graders discovered our farmers don't have access to local accurate weather. So they jumped into action and partnering with a local seed co-op and Weatherbug, the international weather company. And Culver is now an international weather station, and our uh, farmers, at the, just at their fingertips, they can have local accurate weather. And actually, so can anyone else in the world who wonders about Culver. <laughs> in third grade, we had the ice cream problem. So in, while studying matter, states of matter, students entered the classroom, and there was a bowl of ice cream on everybody's desk. So the teachers then said, OK, just go ahead and put those in your cubbies. We'll eat them for afternoon snack. <laughs> the third graders couldn't get over it. <laughs> They're like, what? That doesn't work. And so the teachers challenged them, OK, engineer something. Build something that'll keep it frozen for afternoon snack. 
epic failure. All the devices failed. <laughs> so they partnered with Thermos, and a representative from Thermos came and taught the students, how do you engineer a device that will keep things hot or will keep things cold? And um, the students re-engineered their devices. And um, later that week, they made homemade ice cream in the morning. And in the majority of the cases, the children <laughs> ate <laughs> frozen ice cream in the afternoon. Our middle school is currently involved with Lake Billy Chinook and um, the campground. I don't know if you remember, but last August, there was a wildfire that took out about 200 acres of the campground. And the park rangers, knowing of our team's initiative, came and asked our middle schoolers, will you help us rebuild the area? And of course, it was a resounding yes. So, so far, they have rebuilt nature trails. They have um, gone last fall and cut willow shoots, brought them to our high school greenhouse. They got to spend the winter all warm, growing roots. And just last month, they went and replanted them in hopes that 80% of them will reproduce. They were a part of volunteering at a huge event in Central Oregon called Eagle Watch. And next on the docket is a monarch way station. Um, Central Oregon is on the migratory path for the monarch butterflies. So our middle schoolers are going to help build a two-acre awesome pit stop for monarch butterflies. <laughs> and our bigs, our high schoolers, are working um, on Willow Creek. It's off of Highway 26, and it has all but dried up due to unchecked juniper growth and drought. So the Forest Service and range management folks knew of our team's initiative and, and asked if we would like to be involved in a watershed restoration project. And of course, the answer was yes. So we got grants to um, provide scientists to work with our kids and to provide money for the field trips while they go out and work, and also to um, have drones present that navigate the progress up and down the creek bed during the whole project. Um, just a few other quick ones. Our middle schoolers worked with a Haystack Reservoir on the green algae problem. A group of high schoolers um, worked with city council on a proposal. They said, our city park is very friendly for the peewees, but we teenagers have not much, so they made this whole proposal. And next week, on Thursday, there is the first ever STEM Fest in Culver School District. Every single student throughout the day will be sharing one of the projects that they've been involved in this year. It is in these projects that students lose track of time. They get to use science, engineering, um, math, the arts, speaking, working with the community. And it's in these projects they learn they don't have to wait till they're a grown up to make a positive difference in their community. They can do it right now. In this initiative, anytime you do a big change, I think it goes through a process. And I like to think of it as simple, complex, simple. So simple to decide, yep, we're going to do it. This is how, what we're going to do. Complex, how do we do it? How do we get all the pieces to work together? What do we change? What's the policy? What are the new rules? How are we going to fund it? And then the hope is eventually it will go back to simple. It'll just be the way we do school. We're smack dab in the middle of the complex. After two and a half years, we're still in the complex working through those issues. There's a couple barriers or challenges we've run across. The first being funding. We have to get grants to fuel this, this initiative all the time. The second is the current structure of our education system. So for Oregon, our education standards are very siloed. So um, there are math standards for students. There are science standards for students, physical education, English, and so on. In our high school accreditation process, um, you as a high schooler have to sit in front of the, in the science class for so many hours to get the science credit, which then counts towards your diploma. And then our teacher prep programs still are very siloed as well. I'm going to be a high school history teacher, or I'm going to be a high school English teacher, and so on. And then likewise, our state licensure agency for teachers is still siloed. It's a fact um, you're only authorized to teach history at the high school or in different things. So um, 
along the way, we're going to keep working through these challenges. We're going to keep in that complex because I am just sure it's going to end up simple again. And we've learned three really important things. The first being um, when a big initiative like this involve all of your stakeholders. I first went to, I had this idea, I wrote up a plan, and I had the why. And I went to this group of enthusiast teachers, and they were in. They're like, yes. Then we went to the administration, explaining the what and the why, and they were in. Um, OSU was in. Then we went to the school board, and they were in. And then we went to the entire staff, and all the while being really transparent about that why. And um, finally, we had a monster size open house, kindergarten through 12th grade, all the families in the gym, and we explained the what and the why. And I believe it is this transparency that garnered all of our support. And um, I, I wonder how many of you know of the initiatives in your local schools, and, and is it communicated with the stakeholders? The second, uh, perhaps the most important learning, was um, the beauty of these community partners. The level of rigor and expertise they bring. Sometimes we as the adults are learning right next to the kids. You know, we're on the edge of our seat too to learn all this new high rigor information. We have yet to find one community partner who won't make time for kids. And I bet there's some amazing community partners in here and you could partner with your local schools on the initiatives. And the last is sort of that grit factor to sort of stay the course and lead the way. Um, there's going to be critics. There's going to be messes in that complex part. But um, believe, believe it can happen. And probably the best thing to do is let the students tell the story. Let them lead the way. I believe we have to save our kids from the traditional. I think we have to try a new structure to prove a new system can work, to grow a different student. One who imagines what might be, one who wants to have a positive impact on their community, no matter their age, one who is a big thinker, one who is resilient, one who colleges and careers are dying to get because of the way they learn and apply it, and one who wants to show up for more than fourth period. Thank you.